Shut up and sit down. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets, people, pop culture. Let's bring on the host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll <laughs> dogs. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and you are listening and watching Vegas Rock Dog Radio. It's a rock and roll show all about pets, people, and pop culture. And today is going to be a fantastic show. My guest in studio is Richard Hunter, and a lot of you will know Richard because a lot of my animal-loving friends have followed you for a long time as well. So, Oh, excellent. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. I'm so glad you finally moved to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I I met you. Uh, gosh, I don't even know how long ago that movie was shown at the Palms. Uh, gosh, it was uh, a while, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of years was at it, least. Was it, right? Was it Tino who organized it? Yes. Yeah. I, so it was quite a while ago. Yes. I I I saw you in there, and I was like, oh, this is my kind of person. I just wanted to say thank you to that d- that day. Yeah. For actually just being a voice for these animals, and we're going to get into that. Thank you. A lot more. So. If you are watching the show for the first time or you're listening in for the first time and you want to find us on the Internet, it's very easy. Just search for Vegas Rock Dog Radio or Vegas Rock Dog and you'll find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Oh, gosh, what else? We have a blog. We have a blog. You'll find us on the blog too, the rockandrolldog.com. And if you want to pick up some rock and roll clothing for you and your pet, you'll go to our website, vegasrockdog.com. And uh, once you wear our gear, you're very cool. You make yourself instantly cool. And uh, you and your dog can dress the same. <laughs> Not in a cheesy way, in a rock and roll kind of way. Um, if you've been using the Yap app, stop using it. It's going away. So stop using that right now. A brown brand new app is going to show up. Now, if you miss the show, you can always watch back a replay on Facebook or you can listen to the show, an archive show on iTunes, iHeartRadio and any other podcast catcher that you may have on your phone. Just search for Vegas Rock Dog Radio. And don't forget, we have our pet tip of the day on iTunes called Pet Tip of the Day. And it's a 30 second little nugget of information to either help you uh, save money as a pet parent, uh, some new information on medical, nutrition, you name it, we cover it. So you can also listen to that. I'm not actually doing a pet tip of the day because I know that it's going to eat in my time with Richard. So um, we're going to maximize as much time as, as we possibly got uh, to be able to share this amazing documentary that Richard Hunter and his beautiful dog, Mel, were in about, uh, I hate to call them the Michael Vick dogs, because I, I don't, I like, they, he didn't have the honor of even being attached to them now. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I, I think, I think it's an important uh, connection to make just because people, I think, I would like for people to always remember the, the legacy of that yes. and what it was. Yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, in, in a way, it's good, but you know, I'll run into people now. That even though that was, it, it seems like just yesterday, I'll run into people that are young enough now, they don't remember who he was. Right. And I don't mind the fact that people don't remember who he was for uh, for other things, but uh, unfortunate as it was, I think it's important that people remember yeah. this story. I, yeah. I share that with you. Um, I've been criticized a lot Every time his name pops up. Oh, yeah. You get that too, huh? Yeah, I do. I just, and people have criticized me for that. And friends, and I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Some things are just. The old, he's done his time. He's done his. Yeah, exactly. And again, they don't know the full story either. Yeah. Um, There's a a lot of um, information out there that's not correct, or they just don't know the whole picture. That's what I mostly find. That's what frustrates me. And I mean, I take every opportunity to educate people about, Mm -hmm. about that. But his name pops up and it's like Ugh, I just it's a horrible feeling and I feel like as and as many people don't know he did time for financial crimes right but not for the dogs yeah the racketeering is what got him. that's <laughs> wow. uh the IRS uh it, you you don't want to get on the wrong side of them and if they find out that they're missing out on some cash uh even if it was uh, gotten from uh, uh gambling on illegal dog fighting right. they're going to uh they're going to hold you accountable so yeah his the time that he did in in prison was was almost exclusively based on the racketeering yeah. charges. And yeah. that's what people don't know. And 
I'm going to tell you exactly. You people know who I am. I'm very black and white anyway. Even if he'd done some time for the dogs, it would never be enough for me anyway. And it never erases what happened. Just yeah. because you did some time, it, it doesn't. It's not that you never did it. Well, you did I it. I thought that one of one of the real um, educational aspects of this for me was that I thought people. I thought most people knew right. that. Uh, when someone uh, is is cruel to animals, that that is a real uh, harbinger for mm-hmm. where they're headed. Yes, that uh, they have psychopathic tendencies. That 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 if you and and you don't take my word for it, you ask a, a psychiatrist, yes. and they will say the number one red flag for uh, somebody who is going to grow up to harm children, to harm, you know, other other adults, whatever, is uh, animal cruelty. I thought people knew that. And and through yeah. m- through my own radio show, and that was that was how I got involved in this whole case to begin with, was covering it uh, yeah. as it happened. And this was long before I had adopted Mel. I, uh, to, to my shock, I discovered that most people don't realize that. And so what ended up happening was a lot of people would say, well, he uh, he just fell in with a bad crowd. He went through <laughs> right. a weird phase. He uh, you know wrong place, wrong time. He wasn't really hands on involved in this so much. A lot of misinformation yes. like that. And the reality was uh, completely the opposite. That number one, this isn't when somebody does these type of things. This isn't just uh, a phase they're going through. You're talking about no. wires in someone's head yeah. that are crossed. Yeah. And and it it's important to note in this story and this is all public information if you look at the his uh, uh plea deal that he basically had to uh, stipulate to. Right. Uh he on two separate occasions took his children's dogs yeah. who were not pit bulls away from them and threw them in his fighting pit to watch them shred to pieces yeah. and just laughed while it yes. happened. I mean, he that's child abuse. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, did anyone even look into him as a parent? Well, not not shook. formally, no. It's shocking. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, these things are, this is not just me telling you this. And I know a lot of times people, and this is why the Champions documentary, uh, I, I thought, was so important and did such a good job of this part of the story, dark as it was, is when you see the film and you see me talking about this part, Darcy Denon, who directed the Champions, is running a, a B-roll where she's lifting the words off of the page from the uh, the the uh, um, the uh, the government report. Yes. As I'm saying it, and it was important. Uh, it was important, Sam, because I think a lot of people, when they hear just me talk about it, will think. Well, you know, of course he's upset. Yeah. He has the dog. Yeah, yeah. And he's, you know, he's I, bound to feel I that feel way. I feel for the guy, but he's probably exaggerating some. And even though it's in mainstream, even though you can find these articles yes, online, it's not hidden. It's certainly it's not, not hidden. It just didn't get the same publicity no. that the dog fighting itself got. And I, it's an important uh, point to make because for all of the attention that the actual dog fighting got. The people that were running this thing with Vic, and he ran that ring for six, seven years. Oh, is that long? The the, the guys mm. that were running this with him were criminals. I mean, these were yeah. hardcore thugs, and he was freaking them out. If you read their testimony, they were saying, listen, we were telling this guy, you know, when the dog, we had a dog maybe that, that we didn't want to fight, wasn't a good fighter or whatever, we'd say, can we just give him away? Yeah. Can we just let him go? Vic said, we're missing out on some fun if we don't watch him tortured to oh, death. Gosh. So, you know, everything you saw from the electrocution to the drowning to the, the dog that he was, uh, you know, taking uh, by the, the legs and just repeatedly beating yes. on the ground until he watched it die, that was a thrill for him. Yeah. And that's the important part yes. of this story. Sorry to sorry to uh, uh, bring the uh, bring the it's, cheerful news today. But I think but it's, it's okay. Important. I think it's okay, Richard, because yeah. I think if we sugarcoat this, which yeah, the, right. a lot of the media have, and you don't get the full story, then yeah. they'll never understand the reaction that people had and why there has to be some action as part of that. Right. Um, I I have no problem with a, a shot commercial. I have no problems with any of those things because sometimes. Um, a, a shocking thing that you see sometimes will spring you into action. It does. And my my message isn't for him. No. He, he's he's a broken person. Yeah. So he doesn't, you know, a psychopath doesn't have empathy. So and take it from me as somebody who has looked him square in the eye with mm-hmm. just a few feet uh, between the two of us. 
There's nothing upstairs. Really? He does not. Uh, I mean, it is like looking right straight through somebody. I bet that like was dead chilling. eyes. It was very when, chilling. When you see I, someone's just dead inside. Yeah, it was. I, I was prepared for a lot of things. I thought, I mean, I knew that was going to be happening. I knew I was going to try to talk to him. And, you know, the, you see footage of this in the Champions documentary, The Confrontation. But when I use the word confrontation, I was talking to him just as calmly as I'm yeah, speaking are. to you. Uh, he wanted no part of that conversation. No. But I was prepared for, you know, is he going to be confrontational with me? Yeah. Is he going to see that there's a camera? And is he going to try to finesse this thing a little bit? Yes. Instead, as to your point, what I got was so much more chilling because it was like in that moment where he puts two and two together, he realizes who I am, what we're talking about. There was just nothing going on. And I was like, you're looking straight through someone and you realize that he doesn't understand what any of this fuss is about. Right, he's probably, I don't get, I don't get he this. Doesn't. What, what is this? He's learned it the hard way. He's figured out the hard way that he lacks something that normal people have, which, right. which is empathy. Yes. He's now aware that he doesn't have it, but it doesn't mean that he, he gets it, it right? <laughs> right? So yeah. it's, that's not really a, a reversible condition. But I talk about this not for him because he's not reachable. But it's for all the other people who allow him to be what he is. It's yes. our culture. and It, it is. It's, an, it's a part of that kind of celebrity, yeah. celebrity sports person culture. Particularly with sports. Yes. Here's, it's like the two – people have a way of separating them. Here's what I think it's, happens uh, in, in, our, in our culture. And uh, I think what happens is, especially as it pertains to sports and particularly as it pertains to the NFL, by the time the average guy – in his mid 40s has gotten to that point in his life things have not turned out well right. okay he's got a job that he hates right. he might be married to somebody he's not that fond of anymore <laughs> right. and on sundays that's the day he doesn't have to think about either one of those things he's got the day off wife goes off and leaves him alone yeah and he puts on a jersey yeah and he sits down in front of the television and he uses pronouns like we and us oh we the team right we had a tough first half they joined the team we made an adjustment at halftime and we came back exactly they're a part of that team and so when you confront them with this it's not that they don't get it it's that it's a terribly inconvenient truth yes. and if you if you talk about it and, and talk about it and keep working it through with them, where you eventually get to is them looking at you going, this is all I've got in my miserable life. <laughs> life. Do you have, do Stop you have ruining to it. affect this? Exactly. Yeah, and it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a fantasy. Um, it's an escape, isn't it? Yeah. But, and a denial at the same time. But, but let me tell you where that starts, not to put the blame on, uh, on, on the common fan. I think where that starts is with the the NFL ownership because they treat these people like livestock. They're athletes. Now there's millions of dollars involved. So and a lot of times because they come from uh, you know disadvantaged upbringing, it, you don't. It feels like you're the king of the world. Okay, yes. but let's look at what's really happening from the time that you're in you know junior high to high school. They've 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 literally slapped a blue ribbon on you right. like uh, like at <laughs> yeah. the stock show saying this one is going to turn out to be something special. And so when you go to the combine right for the for the NFL, they weigh you, they measure you, oh. they parade you around, you mm. know, and so it really is kind of a dehumanizing thing. So yes. what happens is when something like this happens, when 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 Mike Vick gets busted and at the time he was playing for the Atlanta Falcons owned by uh, Arthur Blank, who, you know, most almost all these guys are just kind of middle aged white businessman billionaires. Right. right. And they don't look at it like, oh, my, my esteemed colleague, Michael Vick, my peer, my contemporary has disappointed me with his lapse in judgment. They don't look at it that way. They look at it like, oh, one of my, you know, my prized bulls has busted down the stall and run amok in the village, and I've got to get him corralled because we have a rodeo on and Sunday. And we've got some money to make. And I don't like that. I mean, well, I fault them for that. I yeah. think it's terrible to dehumanize someone like that. They yeah. didn't make Mike Vick what he was, but what I'm saying is when you create that kind of culture as a baseline, then when you do have someone come into it who is – a sociopath. Yes. Recipe for disaster. Yes, it's going to amplify all of that. Yeah. And 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 I think too many celebrities and sports people are given a pass. They're for just, sure. Just given a pass. And I'm like, if this was just if this was a dog fighting ring, not a famous person, I think more people would be outraged. You know, yeah. but, the, but the defending of it, it 
I just, I just, what it would do to me would be make me kind of scared that people I knew thought that was. You could defend that. That you know what Ooh, that, that was probably. So, I yeah. don't like that. No, I was, that. That's not the kind of person I'm with as a friend, yeah. and I can't be. Yeah. If you defend that, you you know you're off the list. It, it probably has been one of the more disappointing aspects of this is is learning. What I've tried to do though is realize that a lot of times those folks just don't have all that information, yes. and once they get to that point, a lot. Of, I always find too, especially with men. That and if they're football fans or whatever, everybody may not be. I mean, I get it. We're we're dog lovers, and you know, we're uh, we treat our dogs like uh, kids yep. and all that, and guilty as charged. I've got my hand raised. <laughs> I'm in good but, company. But what I find is, even though uh, everybody isn't necessarily like that, a lot of people are parents. And yes. once you make that, once you explain what this guy was doing to his children, yes. Now that, it's a bridge too far. Now they can make a connection yeah. on some level. And I, it, like you say, it's, a di- it's different for everybody. Yeah. Dog lovers get it straight away. Animal lovers, like, that's wrong. I, I get yeah. it. But as you say, if, if you're just a parent, and I'm saying just a parent, but that's a great way to actually help someone yeah. understand that. I think so too. And, and you know, also people, uh, I think, will sort of make themselves, if they're justifying it to themselves and kind of want to make themselves feel better about, eh, I'm still watching this guy playing. You know, I root oh. against him. You know, I root for the other team. <laughs> but, you know, never mind the NFL's uh, uh, profit sharing where, you know, basically if you're backing the product, no matter who you're rooting for, the entire league benefits. Yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of people will do the, but, you know, he's speaking to kids. Oh, well, he, let me let me tell you. He's learned. Let me tell you. This is... <laughs> You know, that that is a that's a photo op. And, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and I really took issue with uh, uh, like the uh, the 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 U.S. uh, Humane Society and Wayne Pacelli for taking the payoff from Vic because because he was somebody who at the beginning was saying that dogs like Mel over here should just be euthanized right away. They could never be rehabilitated. And then they uh, and they took the money, you know, then he he did the photo op. I mean, I wonder how much um, they they put into. Uh, rehabbing his image through PR. I mean, it had to have been a lot of money. Oh, yeah. You get the the crisis crew in to try to work it over. But I will tell you what happens. Because, I, again, somebody who was in the room. So when I did my, my – attempted to talk to Vic a couple of years. It's been more than a few years back now. He was at a uh, – he, he was at a function where he was speaking to at-risk youth, okay? So here's here's the way that goes. He gets up. Speech is, you know, four minutes long. Uh, he repeats the phrase, each one, teach one, a couple of times okay. because someone's taught him yeah. that. Okay. Uh, and But the one, the one message he actually delivered to this group of kids was, uh, if you make the decisions I make, you could lose everything. Now, that is true, yeah. okay? So so because Vic got caught making the decisions that he made, he temporarily lost his fortune. But here's where that message, Sam, breaks down. First of all, just by the math, no kid in this room has the talent he has. Right. I mean, it's one in a million, okay? So first yeah. of all, mathematically speaking, none of these kids are going to grow up to athletically be Michael Vick. So that's number one, uh, which means that if they go to prison – uh, the NFL is not <laughs> salivating when they get out not, to I, get them back into the and fold. And didn't he have a deal before he went into prison that he knew he was coming out to a deal? No, I don't. I've never heard that. But it but was he quick, did though, get wasn't it? Back. It was yeah, a I quick. Mean, not only got his NFL deal back, got his Nike deal back. Nike still sponsors him. Mm-hmm. Under Armour is another one. And so what happened was uh, he he said that to to the kids. Now, if if he really comprehended the the you know, the horror of what he had done. He would have said this to these kids. Kids, if anybody in this room has a feeling within themselves that they want to harm something Mm. or someone, do not leave this room today without telling someone. Tell a parent, tell a teacher. We got a lot of teachers here. Tell me. Yes. Because look at me. Yes. I didn't do that. And now look at what's happened. But he didn't say it because he's never thought it. No, no. And I think if you have truly changed or you've worked on yourself or there's a little bit of realization, you would you would 
it would you would say it. You would just say we it. get into this weird thing in our society where it's like uh, we got to have a message delivered to the kids. So let's find the worst offender <laughs> to try. You know, it's like it's like it's it's probably a good idea to tell your kids not to talk to strangers. But I don't need Jared from Subway no. to deliver that message I, to them. You exactly. know, exactly. I, I think I can explain it just there are fine. Far better people to get behind. Right. I mean, if this is the one person you want to get behind, it makes no sense whatsoever. It makes no sense. There's some amazing yeah. people. Yourself, get behind you because the things that you've been doing to actually change, you know, people's perceptions of this breed as well. I mean, that's what makes me laugh is like, really? That's the best person you could find to support? That, that yeah. makes no sense. And you can't be a friend of mine. It's <laughs> it's so funny, you know, because the uh, uh, Best Friends uh, Animal Society, which is the fantastic yeah. organization that rescued all the dogs, took them in when these other organizations were saying, you know, euthanize them right away yeah. and was able to get uh, all uh, the vast majority of them adopted. Um, th- one of the great things that Best Friends did when when Mel and the other Victory Dogs got adopted was they put all of the families in touch with each other. Yes. So we all started getting to know each other by emails. We exchanged photos, and it was it was helpful in the sense we had a lot of the same challenges, the same experiences, right. or, or maybe not enough knowledge or that yeah it was also it was also just very fulfilling because we got to share you know all the the progresses and the the big yeah. moments and that sort of thing but the 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 families that got the dogs they're all they're all great people yeah. and we all kind of laugh and you, you see this in the champions documentary because of the the families that they profiled you know everybody's happy and here's our kids playing with the <laughs> Vic dogs and all that kind of stuff and mel is you see him i don't have any children but you see him in my house as far as like he lives with two dogs and five cats yes. and gets along great with everybody but i'm definitely the hatchet man for the message so it's like <laughs> i'm the one person out of all the families that has to show up and talk about how deplorable humanity I can be i figured you, know? you would be especially with the the arena that you're in yeah um but you know what hold that thought for sure. a minute we need to run some commercials so that we make yes. this show go 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 um and we'll be right back we're going to talk about uh, more about the documentary which is a, i'm going to say it's a beautiful documentary so uh, we'll come right back you'll listen to vegas rock dog radio with me sam your host the queen of rock and roll dogs vegas rock dog radio pets people pop culture at carl's jr not only do we make you happy with our delicious charbroiled burgers but we also make your dogs happy when you come through our drive through with your furry friend we'll offer your dog a treat if not, always ask for one. We love to see their smiling faces. Our website, CarlsJuniorOfLasVegas.com, has a treat for its customers too, with free coupons anytime, so be sure to visit us regularly. Carl's Jr. is a proud and active supporter of dog adoption in our community. You can find us at Carl's Jr. of Las Vegas or on Twitter at Carl's Jr. of Vegas. Pet Scene Magazine is dedicated to Las Vegas pets and the people who love them. It's a source of news and information for pet lovers, as well as offering valuable coupons and specials on pet products and services. Find them online at www.lvpetscene.com or look for them on Facebook. Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Pets. People. Pop culture. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Richard Hunter and his dog Mel. Look how handsome he is. He's, he's a cute little peanut, I have to say. He's. Uh, it's interesting. I'll, I'll tell you why he's over there like he is. Mel always uh, to the hey buddy to this day. He always feels comfortable if he goes into a room with people he doesn't know. He likes to go to a corner and he'll he'll just sort of put his back to the corner so yeah. nothing sneaks up on him. And he's he's very friendly. He'll let you any of you could just go over and pet him and and as long as you're sort of coming to him in his corner, yes. he likes you to come to him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he never meets a dog or a cat he doesn't like. He instantly gets along with all of them. So it's really just new people that he's yeah. a little nervous and around. And I mean this is a lot. I mean we've got cameras in here and lots of lights, you know, and four strange people and so and it's funny cuz I I was going to ask you prior to yeah. How does he like to be greeted? I mean, my own dog um, has had some issues too. He mm-hmm. wasn't a fighting dog, but mm-hmm. he lived by himself in the desert. Yeah. So he was never around people or animals. And he's the kind of dog that 
no. I'm, just ignore me, and no, I'll decide when I'm yeah. ready to, to be a, your friend. <laughs> you know, one of the uh, one of the things I think that's been great for Mel's rehabilitation, actually, with the publicity that all this has gotten, is he has gotten to do a lot of events, which helps him to socialize. Yes. He gets around a lot of people. And, uh, you know, when we did the um, the Best Friends Conference a couple of years ago at the Rio, he sat, I mean, he must have taken... 200 pictures like people wanted to come up and you know do a picture with him yeah. or something and he was fine with it he sat in a banquet chair and as long as they <laughs> sort of came and sat next to him yeah. he was uh he was comfortable with it it's actually he loves uh, i'll have to spell uh, uh c-a-r-r-i-d-e because if i say it uh, uh oh. he'll <laughs> dance around so uh that's his favorite thing in the world but uh <laughs> it's actually easier for him to meet new people in a c-a-r really? because he just sort of feels I think he's just more naturally comfortable in there. Yeah. It's kind of like a little, in fact, you see this with Handsome Dan, one of the other dogs in the uh, Champions documentary. He has his uh, stroller. They push, they call it the Pope Mobile. The Pope Mobile. Yeah, they push him around. It's fantastic. Him. And I think the car for Mel is kind of, oh, I said, oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, yeah, he starts smiling oh, over there. I know. What did you say? Uh, he slipped like, up. He's like, Dad talks a lot, but every once in a while he's, I hear a word. And he that, slips up. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, they all seem to like kind of uh, the security of that enclosed space. Yeah. So even in the vehicle, it's like something about the glass partition being between him and another person. It's something that helps. It's security. So well, I think yeah. what what I got from the documentary, and uh, you can watch the documentary on Netflix, yeah. and don't do one of those, oh, I don't want to watch it, I don't want to cry. It's a beautiful documentary. And, yeah, I cried all the way through it. It really is. I, I, will, I will just get – here's my guarantee to you. Honestly, the the only time that, that Michael Vick is really discussed at, at any length at all – is during my dark scenes. Yeah, so, so I like the that. the rest of it's very happy and uplifting. <laughs> so my I brooding like face But this shows is not up. a documentary about Michael Vick. No. This is about the dogs now. Yeah. And I think what I got from the documentary was each personal couple that adopted these dogs, let them be themselves. Yeah. And so... There may be there may be pet owners that look and go, oh, why is he in the corner? You know, you're not. We're not. No one is looking for a perfect dog. They're not. They're not meant to be little perfect machines. Yeah. And because we all have our own little things anyway. So if being in a corner makes him feel secure, you let them let him be. He's himself. And he's he's ten times better than he was when we first got him. Oh, and that, I bet. that's an that's something I always like to tell people because sometimes it does make them sad if they've never met him before and they see because he when he sees new people he'll shake for right. a minute. And uh, and it, it, they feel bad about it. And I always tell them, listen, I know I, I would get it if I had not met him before. But I, I will tell you the upside of this is he's made such tremendous progress. I, I think what happens, and because I've experienced it with my own dog, with Mr. Twix, is... Mr. Twix. Mr. Twix. I love, yeah. cho- I love English chocolate. So yes. all the dogs are named after Galaxy Twix. Oh, okay. Uh, Thornton. I mean, yeah. you, don't, you don't get that chocolate here. But um, Mr. Twix is quite the character. But... It, for me, the tiny little changes were ma- they were a time yeah. to celebrate. Yeah. And sometimes I think you can miss those if you don't have a dog, you know, like mine or, or Mel, who's come from a, 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 a situation where it's, it's kind of like no, there's been no socialization, there's been yeah. no interaction. Yeah. And and so when you see these changes, and I did have a friend recently that she was talking about her Chihuahua shakes. They've had it a year. Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, frightened of everything. I said it's time. Time changes these dogs, mm-hmm. and it's we're on their schedule, not on ours. We can't make them feel happy about the situation because they don't know they were rescued. Right. All they know is that they went from this situation. They don't go, oh yeah, I'm out, I'm out of the fighting ring. They don't know that, and it takes time for them to you know be familiar with people, and they're not going to go away, and they're not you know, or they're not going to hurt them. Yeah. And so I think people need to understand that is that you can't make them move faster than where where they're at at that point. And so like you said, to to look from from then to now, it's phenomenal. Yeah. But I think that's one of the best things that people can see about any kind of animal because so many people write them off and mm-hmm. say. Oh, you can't rehab and put him down, da 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 da, or, or just re- or just recover from these horrific lives that they've had. But I think it shows that it's possible. It's kind of an example for us as humans, I think, because uh, yeah. you know I think he's given people a second chance in a way mm-hmm. that a lot of people wouldn't give other people a second chance True. if they had something like that <laughs> happen to them. Yeah, True. He's, he's more of a man than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's just, and I do question myself. I'm like, you know, I'm very forgiving, but it's just the, I just can't. 
I just can't. And it, let it go. I'm not going to well, let it go. It doesn't. It does. It's not even something that rises to the level of forgiveness. And I think that's because I, you know, when people, how do you, you know, when people say, oh, you, do you just not forgive people? <laughs> you know, it, it, that's not even part of the equation. Sometimes in our society, people do things that are so egregiously antisocial yeah. that um, we we mar- we have to to neutralize them and what i mean is maybe they don't go to prison for the rest of their lives but we certainly flag them yes. we certainly keep an eye on them and we certainly say you need help and see this is another component of the 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 vic misinformation is people erroneously thought that he got some sort of psychiatric care that there was oh well he went to prison so it i'm sure it was court ordered that he sure, had to have therapy yes. and all this sort of thing and see he one of the things that i wanted to talk to him about if he had been willing to to talk with me the day that i, I tried to confront him was he had started ask he had started saying uh, well, don't feel bad for me, but feel bad for my kids because they want a dog and we're not allowed to have a dog, which, by the way, since he's had a couple of dogs. But uh, uh, he says, uh, yeah, we're not allowed to have a dog and just feel bad for my kids. <laughs> and I uh, so I had two questions for him. One was what uh, why do they need new dogs? What happened to the old ones? Yeah, because I knew the answer to that. Oh. But I also knew that that was not really being covered a lot in the media. So and that, I didn't that, hear about that either. So what what yeah. did happen? Can you reveal? Yeah, he killed him. No. I mean, that was that's what we talked about. At oh, the beginning the, was he took the so those were the family the original pets. pets yes. Yeah, those were the family pets. Right. And then the second thing was he had started using the word rehabilitation. He'd started saying. Uh, you know, uh, uh, having a dog, I think, would be great for my rehabilitation. Well, what I wanted to say to him was, tell me about the rehabilitation. Yes. Is this now, <laughs> does the therapist travel with you on the road when you play? Do you call them? How many times a week do you visit? Because I knew yeah. the answer to that. The answer was nothing. <laughs> nothing. The answer was you're just using that word. You don't get any help with any of this. Yeah. But yeah, I, I wanted him on record discussing that. Yeah. And, of course, he didn't want to have a conversation. Well, and I think the other question is... Invitation's what, still open, though. Why, why, it, why is it your kids can't have a dog? Yeah. <laughs> Let, no, let's that's... rewind a little right. bit. Yeah. Right. Um, and again, that, to me, that's not taking responsibility. You know, no. don't feel bad me. Feel bad for the kids. No, I feel bad for the kids. They had you as a dad who killed their original pets, and that's yeah. why they can't have a dog. So it, to me, that's you, you haven't changed. If, if he did not have the, uh, the athletic ability that he had... We'd spend two minutes yeah, thinking about that's this. Right. It would be okay. This guy. Wait a minute. This guy's getting out of prison. He's not moving in next door to me, is he? He's not. <laughs> my kids aren't going over there, are <laughs> right. they? Right. And then with the job, you know, people would say, "Well, he's got a right to earn a living after he gets out of prison." Let me tell you, when you get paroled from prison, you know what you your guarantee is. You know what you get. You don't have to be in prison anymore. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Try going to prison for a couple of years and then going back to Home Depot yes. where you were working and going, I'm back. See how that what's, works. Get, what's my schedule this week? Yeah, and then does. looking at you going, I don't, <laughs> one, I don't remember you. Yeah. Two, you're a felon and we're not hiring you. Well, Go I, away. I, I think that was the craziest part about giving him the key to the city and yeah. he was a convicted felon. Again, are there not better people to get behind and give them a key? All right. So that, <laughs> I, since you brought that up, I have to tell you a quick story about that. So when, when I was still living in Dallas, at the time I uh, went to try to talk to Vic at this event I did not know that at the event a city councilman uh, was was going to be there presenting Michael Vick a key to so the you city had no idea, no idea. Oh. and so what happened was and you really don't see the backstory of it because this is a great story you don't see the backstory of this in the champions documentary so this councilman's name was Dwayne Carraway and so what happened was uh, Vic is up there. He does his little uh, photo op. And then Dwayne Carraway gets up and announces that he's presenting Michael Vick the key to the city. So this is over a weekend. So I'm, I filmed the whole thing. I put it on YouTube. It's there. You can see a dog owner confronts Michael Vick if you search on YouTube. Yeah, and we'll the put these links there. up on our page yeah. as well. It's, uh, uh, so this was over a weekend, right? So I included that in the, uh, in the video not realizing the local controversy that that part of it was going to create. So what happened was, bright and early Monday morning, I get a call from the beat writer from the Dallas Morning News who covers the City Hall beat. Uh-huh. And he says, listen, he says, we, we got a problem down here. He said, we're watching this video. He said, first of all, the mayor is the only person authorized to give a key to the city. Okay? Oh. So, so he went rogue. Like, first of all, he can't give anybody a key. Second of all, he said, we're looking at this video 
And he said, whatever that is that he's handing him, that is not a key to the city. And I said, what do you mean? I said, you mean he bootlegged a key to the no. city? And they go, well, maybe. We're not no. sure, but that is not a key to the city. <laughs> so that. it turned out what he had done was he was a fan. That's what this was. Right. He was a big fan, and he went down there on his own, and he didn't think anybody was going to catch it. But what he did was he had some other award that looked like a key that somebody had given him, oh. and he regifted it is basically <laughs> what he did. So he's up there waving this around that this is a key to the city. Okay. So a few days later, uh, city council meetings, there's this opportunity every week where a citizen can get up and speak for five minutes, right? So I announced that I'm going to be down there demanding that we get this key back. Fantastic. So all the media shows up, all the the news networks and all that, and they're there to film it. Well, Dwayne Carraway gets word of this and doesn't show up for work that day. Oh, you're kidding. So the mayor, (laughs) Tom Leppert is chairing the meeting. Now, coincidentally, Tom Leppard is about to step down early from his term because he's going to run for Senate. I see. This is the last thing. I mean, it's like the last week of his job. All he wanted to do <laughs> was just, just a smooth transition. Sunset, right? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, you know, he's got these cameras in his face going, did you authorize this? He's like, I didn't have anything to do with it. So I'm up there at the lectern and I've got my five minutes to speak and I'm, you know, pounding the podium and holding my picture of Mel up and talking about, you know, the tears that were shed and we'd been humiliated by a uh, elected official. And I said to the mayor, I said, this has to be the first time in the history of the city of Dallas that we have given a key to someone who had to first notify their parole officer (laughs) that they would be traveling out of state in order to accept it. I said, it's going to cost a fortune to have all the locks changed. (laughs) The and, whole city. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, the 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 upshot of that is to to wrap it though the uh, they actually changed the the charter of the city in the wake of this to to specifically say that if you are a convicted felon you are ineligible for a key to the city of Dallas. Now who knew we needed that rule? Wow, I mean, apparently we did. We did, and thank goodness we do have it. But I do know Mel got got the key. He did. So that was the other funny <laughs> thing too. You see this in the Champions documentary. <laughs> Uh, uh, Angela Hunt, who was one of the other city council women who was just sort of outraged by all this, actually showed up uh, at an event a couple of weeks later and gave Mel his own key to the city, which was this giant dog biscuit in the shape of a <laughs> of a key. So uh, it, it was quite the local controversy. Oh, my God. I can't yeah. believe that, that he, he had a fake key that was re-gifted. He didn't this have guy. the permission to do it. I mean, these people are sad. They're just sad. There's no hope for them. It is pretty crazy sometimes when you see the kinds of people that can get elected to local government when nobody's paying attention. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I will say, I think the documentary is, is really a beautiful documentary. And I think it also shows this breed in such a fantastic light. Yeah. Which it, they've been, at, you know, this breed has been under attack for a good, what, 30 years. You know, we've gone through 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 media through the years where it was the German Shepherd was the most dangerous dog. And then it yeah. was the Rottweiler. And it seems to have latched on to this kind of breed for such a long time. And it's it's unfair it's completely unfair. Yeah. It's not only is it unfair, it's 180 degree the opposite of the, the truth. And yeah. and one of the biggest lessons in, because I'd never had a pit bull before. I didn't have any experience with them. Didn't didn't have a bad opinion, just didn't have any experience, but I certainly knew the, the stigmas. Yes. And uh, one, of the, one of the stipulations, uh, pardon me, of adopting Mel was that we had to have a trainer work with him for the first six months. And I learned a lot of, from that trainer. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that he taught me, one of the things that you see in the documentary, and I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that I think has hit home the most with a lot of the people that I encounter in my daily life, I, I have a weird job outside of that. I, uh, I work with a lot of mixed martial arts fighters, yeah, so like UFC, that. Ultimate yeah. Fighting Championship. And so we're talking about, you know, large men who, you know, beat up other men for a living, <laughs> right. but do it voluntarily. I mean, do it with people who they are often friendly with out outside of the cage, but uh, uh, a guy that, that uh, I co-host my own show with who is a, you know, a, a 265-pound heavyweight champion wow. was just in, in you know, on the verge of tears over this particular element that he saw in the documentary because he saw the behavioral expert explaining that what happens with the dogs is they're exploited for their loyalty. Yes. And so what happens is when this the pit bull, because they are so loyal— yeah. When you put them between yourself and what appears to be an angry dog, 
they think that dog is coming for their owner. Yes. And they're going to give up their life, if need be, yeah. to defend the owner. And that that is, to, to a lot of the guys, I mean, it should be to anybody, but to a lot of the actual professional fighters I, I work with, to them, that is the height of cowardice. It, it that is. That is the most cowardly yeah. thing you could do because, you know, you and I, it's no different than you and I could take uh, like a mentally challenged person, somebody of diminished mental capacity, and we could fool them into thinking we need them to fight for us. We're right. in danger. Yes. You know, uh, who would want to watch it? Why in the world would that be entertaining? Yeah. And doesn't that make us about the lowest form of life on the planet? It does. It, it really planet? does. And that, really was, that was a part of the documentary that was like, oh, that's just, that's just horrific. Yeah. And these dogs are just being loyal. That's all they're doing. And they, and they had no, and I think people need to understand, understand this, they had no choice but to fight for their lives. No, when you see these dog fighting rings uh, raided, pay attention the next time, because it will happen again. Mm-hmm. The next time you read one of these articles, look at the things they confiscate. Well, they had shock collars and spike this and cattle prods. Okay, if the dogs wanted to fight, you wouldn't need any of that. All you need to do is just put the two dogs together. Right. You're trying to to, to facilitate yes. an unnatural occurrence. Yeah. Secondly, uh, the next time you read one of the horror stories about, you know, the, the, the pit bull attack the kid or whatever, read past the headline. Yes. And it's going to say that, you know, Billy Wayne so-and-so had the dog on the chain and he left the child unattended to go check on his meth lab because he'd left his unregistered <laughs> weapon on top of it. Or what, I mean, there's always, there's a whole lot more to, to that it. story. Yes, there is. And a lot of times the, the mischief maker is just, the dog is one of the weapons that, uh, that he has. Yes. But it's not the only the, one. Yeah, there's more of an arsenal going on. Yeah. Um, we had a, 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 a story locally. Um, someone was attacked by a dog that was a mix of, I think, a terrier, lab, Pitbull, mm-hmm. and and I, I know this story very closely. And all that was reported was it was a pitbull. Yeah. And I thought, here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah. And most people are frightened just to hear the word pitbull, but they've never met one. And I said, well, where have you got your information from? Well, from the news. Yeah. And I and and so it's like it's like a like a learned fear that you've never really experienced. Yeah. And that's why I think I'll, I think a lot of that comes from that as well with people. And then they probably meet Mel, and they're like. Really? Why was I worried? Why was I so scared? I mean, any just all you would have to do is just come to our house and look <laughs> at the, the 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 animal hierarchy. You know, Mel's Mel's going to be your best friend. I got a cat you might not want to meet. You know <laughs> what I mean? But it's like it, it's like he's he's lowest on the list of anybody that uh, you're going to have a hard time with. Talking of cats, was it yeah. Cherry? Yeah, loves the, cats, right? Oh my! They said that the cat spent two weeks being sopping wet because all he ever did was lick and cuddle that Cherry, cat. Cherry uh, loves cats. Cherry is. We think Cherry and Mel are brothers because they're the same exact age, and you know they they look very much alike. Oh. Uh, and uh, Paul and Melissa, who who are Cherry's parents, uh, you also see in the documentary are great friends of ours. And uh, Cherry, does, you know, Cherry's been so great because he does a lot of public appearances, too, for, for shelters and things like this. And I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, the the Champions is has been invited to Michael Moore's Film Festival. I did and read they're, that. they're bringing Cherry. Oh. So he's going to be appearing there uh, on the on the red carpet. But, yeah, he loves cats. Do you know what I liked about, um, I think what you could see, the, the common thread was um, how much everybody just wanted these dogs to, if anything, just be relaxed. Yeah. More than anything, not oh, I don't want my, I'm not bothered if my dog can you know do tricks. If the dog was relaxed, they were really happy about oh, yeah. it. And it does take a long time to decompress from those situations. It took my dog a year before he slept. Yeah. He paced all day, all night, and I thought this dog hasn't slept in who knows how long. And uh, eventually, you know, he might lay down, but then if he moved, he was up. And mm-hmm. then eventually, it got he'd sleep a little bit longer. And then now, <laughs> yeah. I say, you want to go nap, nap? He's the first in bed, and he's oh, the yeah, last yeah. in bed, and he doesn't want to get up. And now he's on his back instead of being curled up in a tiny ball. Yeah. And that means a lot. To, that meant a lot to me. I was like, oh my gosh. And then eventually, when my oldest girl, Galaxy, decided after a year that she'd actually acknowledge he was in the house. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, all of a sudden the queen let him lick her face and her eyeballs, and we were just watching like, oh, are you kidding me? This is amazing breakthrough yeah. wasn't sure which way it was going to go she hadn't been so nice to him yeah, you know? yeah. um but he he's come a very very long way and so those small things just mean so much to me and that's what i got from these people were which is the dog where she said oh little yeah she's now uncoiling 
Yeah. You know, from this tight, tight, I'm trying to be invisible and protect myself to, you know, stretching out. And I mean, look at the. They're all, all of the dogs that you see in uh, the Champions documentary and the families that they went to and the families that weren't featured. There are other, other families. Yeah. But I will tell you that to a family, they're, they're just great people. Yes. Every single y- yeah. one of them. And it, 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 it was healing for me because. You know, I haven't gone through all this and, have, as I said, haven't covered the story on radio for years before I ever even was personally involved with, with Mel. It just showed you what's horrible about people. Yeah. And this was this showed me what was good about. Oh, it, it's you do feel very good about this. Yeah. You, you go, I want to be friends with them. You yeah, know, they, they, you can just tell, like, to their core, they are good they're, people. They're can. people that I want to have more kids. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, let's <laughs> right. help, let's populate this place a little. Uh, With the yeah. right genes. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. because of your arena being yeah. in radio, uh, your podcast is the phone booth. It's called phone booth fighting. Phone booth fighting. Yeah. Um, because of that, I'm assuming you were a big help when everybody and their dog started to become famous. You know, where people reaching to you and say, "Oh my gosh, what do I do? How do I handle this?" Everybody's trying to contact us, and yeah, I, I mean, I, I probably did the the lion's share. Of, certainly, I did the lion's share of the interviews about talking the specifics about the Vic case. I'll tell you, Paul and Melissa Cherry's family are great for you know if you want to see the they got the two cute kids yes! and you know they that's the that's the all american family portrait it you really want so if you're doing your 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 good morning good day vegas show or whatever that's who you want to bring on uh for that but yeah i i definitely have been you know probably i've done more of it just in terms of talking about the specifics because it's it's it ends happy and it's a great heartwarming story, but along the way you do have to relive some some dark. Yes, points. I mean that, that I mean that, that's inevitable. I think you know when yeah. you're doing this kind of a documentary, you know where did they come from to see that difference of of where they've arrived. And most of those, I'll tell you, most of those families they were so far above all that anyway to begin with. It's like they're better people. What I I they're yeah. better people than me. I mean that, that that I told them in the beginning. I was like, well. You know, all you guys are much better at uh, dealing with this stuff than me because you're better people than me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll I'll be the hatchet man. I guess, ha- if I need you to know be. what? I, I think we're very similar in that. Right I, on. I have no fear. I mean, I was the I co-hosted the first rally outside our local shelter. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, at first I thought that's, that's a gym is a little bit scary, but I have to do this because this is not about me. Yeah. This is about treating animals better and doing yeah. a better job and uh, we had so many people come out in the rain it poured on us and uh, we had some amazing people get get up and speak uh, about our shelter doing a better job than what they were doing so uh, i yeah i don't mind being a hatchet man <laughs> no i i like this is great what you've got going on here we need to make sure more people are uh, are tuning in the, uh, this is uh is awesome you get this awesome setup i like oh, the i'm glad you like, I like it the, the, i like the rock and roll vibe right now you, you got a producer who looks like the young pete town have you heard that before? <laughs> You've never heard it? You've heard it before, right? Yeah. Never. I'm the first. Okay. Well, you do. Well, we like to call this studio the sexy studio. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if you know, but Penn Gillette has his he show here. He does a show here, right? Yeah. He loves this studio now. He started to migrate into the sexy studio. Oh, so he really okay. likes the studio. <laughs> yeah, actually, I listened to Sunday School. I listened to his uh, yeah. podcast, and I saw that he had, uh, he when we pulled up, that was my thought. I thought, wasn't it? That's the same place that he does yeah, his show. That's been, very cool. He's been there a little while now. So you get a lot of cool content coming out of this place. Oh. I like it. There's so much stuff that happens at this studio yeah. that, you know, there, you've got guests galore just already here. Sure. You know, and... Um, and it's always interesting. It's always really, really different. Um, Ian posted a picture the other day of some crazy-looking puppets of Hillary Clinton and Trump. It was like the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'm like, what's going on in the studio this afternoon? What are they filming down there? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, there's a lot going on here. It's really exciting. I'm really glad I'm here. I, yeah. I, I wanted to move out my old place, but... There, was, there wasn't a sexy studio to move to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so they built this. So it's, this is fantastic. It really is, and it's it's great for guests to come in. It's so convenient. Yeah, and, and I just try and snag as many people as I possibly can, it's particularly those that come into town for like Super Zoo. Do you go to that? Um, partic- oh, it's the big pet industry conference, oh, okay. and you can shop like crazy. Oh. It's fantastic, and it's a uh, second of it, uh, August, I think. Okay, second wow. or third of August. I'll, I'll send Coming you the up. information. Okay, um, oh. but yeah, it's a big it's a it's a big conference. So everybody's in town. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm snagging all kinds of Doc Halligan's going to come on, and she's oh, known yeah. for her sp- uh, spay neuter truck that she drives yeah. over and does free spay neuters. That's so important. That's it, so important. There yeah. was there was a group that I worked with in Dallas that uh, would do free spay and neutering for uh, low income yeah. families, and th- that part of it's so important because you don't realize. That, you know, that sometime alone could be the difference in whether or not somebody can afford to get a pet. You That's know? right. And it's such an important place to start out with. It really is. I, I'm, I'm just glad so many of these people are in town. And they asked me, um, and I don't think I've shared this with anyone other than my husband, but they've asked me to co-host the pet fashion show. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's I'm, awesome. So I'm doing, I'm doing that. But um, I've had aspirations of starting a group where we provide free spaying and neutering to pets, and then based on uh, individual evaluations, possibly free spaying and neutering to their adopters as well. <laughs> So I'm all for that. Yeah, I'm all for kind of a radical idea. I'm having a trouble getting funding <laughs> off the ground right now, but working on it. Well, I'm on the board of Rocking for Rescues. It's my yeah. my friend's um, foundation. What we do is we raise money for other rescues in town. Okay, well, all over the country actually. Yeah. But we've got a we've got a big party coming up that we're doing as a thank you for everyone that's been involved in it. So I'll make sure you're getting invited. Please, I'd We'd love, love to you come. to come and, and just meet there. this amazing group of people yeah. that that have supported us and allowed us to raise a lot of money for animals. Uh, we started putting our list together and it's so long we we're surprised ourselves with that yeah. is a lot of people that have helped us out but what kind of stuff do you get involved in with mel do you have a particular charity you really like or you know anytime we can either raise money or just even just bring attention to to best friends animal society yeah. always do because i just feel like those people they're the ones who i wouldn't have them if it weren't for them you wouldn't. and i wouldn't have the feeling i have if it weren't for them i mean going there to get him was one of the most memorable experiences of my life because i knew i was ex- obviously i was excited about getting getting him i knew what that was going to mean i didn't realize what it was going to mean to me personally though just in terms of a healing process mm. because I had at that point spent two years dealing with just the the the, the depths and the, the the darkness and the horrors of this case. Yeah. And going there, it was like, oh, these are good people. Yeah. Like these are better people. These are if 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 everybody was like this, we wouldn't have been dealing with this to begin it's with. True. And so uh it's a place that, you know, I always think about going back to and yeah. you know, just even for a, a, a visit or something. So anyway, I just I, I guess, you know, I th- yeah. they're the first ones that come to um, mind. Do they have a local representative? Because I actually don't mm-hmm. know of one. Yeah, they I, I they have. I know they do in Los Angeles, and uh, I'm pretty sure they do here. Oh, because yeah. they did team up with our local shelter. Mm-hmm. They did. Um, and I know they've been doing some stuff with the uh, the uh, TNR program mm-hmm. and, and what have you. But, um, and I was glad they, you know, they started to team up because they do get results. Yeah. I mean, they got great results in L.A. with No Kill. I mean, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. In the, and then Utah. Of yeah. course, that's, that's their stomping ground, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it is an amazing facility, and I don't think a lot of people realize their commitment, you know. Yeah. I'm going to say those, gu- those guys are true believers. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, uh, uh, if, if you meet the, the, especially like the original founders and stuff like that, I mean, those guys were like, you can see, you know, they, it was like everything good that could have come out of the, the I, I I don't I don't know if they I don't, I don't know if they like the word like commune or hippie or whatever, <laughs> whatever. but that, I got that vibe it, though when it, I saw it yeah, in the documentary. I mean, they, it looked like they when they got together they had the idea that one way or another they were gonna just sort of make a better you know microcosm yeah. uh, of society and that that's the path that they ended up taking. But I mean you know to this day they're they're obviously still dedicated to it. Oh so I think gosh, it's a special thing. Well, when did they start that? Seven was the seventies. Yeah, Mid-70s? I think so. I think like very late seventies or early eighties. I'd have to go back, but it's that it's like that far back. If it, we're off, we're not off by more than a few years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is quite incredible how long yeah. they've 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 been going and just this commitment. I mean, I like. Is it Dan the trainer that from Dogtown? Is his name Dan? The dog oh. trainer. Oh, oh, are you talking about uh, John Garcia? John. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I, there's something about him that's yeah. just. He just loves animals, and it's as, it's as simple as that. Uh, He's a great guy, and he was, you know, he became the face of uh, the 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 Victory Dog cause, I think, yeah. for, from the standpoint of the shelter. Because when all of this happened, uh, uh, Georgia, who was one of the Victory Dogs, you know, that was the dog that he was taking around doing, like, Larry King and Ellen DeGeneres and, you know, yes. all the, the first group of media they got. And that was actually... For, you know, the public, that was kind of the first look that they were getting uh, of the dogs. And I think it was important, number one, that they saw Georgia 
uh, mm. as a, a friendly face for Pibbles. But I think also if they thought about the person who must be in charge of keeping them, they probably thought of like a lion tamer with a <laughs> whip and a chair or nice. something. You know? So I think I think John was a great face for that because yes. he was just like this sweet guy. And, yeah. you know, you, you oh, wow. You know, you put that guy and that dog together and this is what you and get. And this is what happened. Yeah. And, and I think there's just there's just he has some understanding about animals that I I. I don't understand because I'm like, he's, like you say, he's not this lion tamer, like yeah. you know, with a big shield and freaking out. He's yeah. got such an amazing demeanor with them, which obviously helps them yeah. you know, move it, forward. Everybody up there, they, uh, there was a, uh, he, one of the things they did was that, that I thought was so good is they, they assigned different trainers to each dog. Yeah. Uh, you know, each trainer was sort of responsible for helping to rehabilitate a, a few certain dogs. I and see. so they got a lot of individual attention. And uh Mel's trainer was uh was a guy named uh Pat Whitaker who uh has has since passed away but he was a really super sweet oh. guy. And uh, uh you know I always remember a couple of conversations I had with him when, when I got Mel and I told Pat, I said, gosh, I, I, you know, I like being here. I'd been at Best Friends for a couple of days because when I went for the interview process, that was one of the stipulations was to stay there in a cabin with my other dog right. and make sure everybody got along. And I said to Pat, I said, you know, uh, I, I like the fact that nobody's talking about Michael Vick yeah. around here. And he goes, he looked at me and goes, yeah, he goes, you know, he goes, we're not trying to find him a home. <laughs> he's like we're not we're not concerned about. It. He's like he's like we're concerned uh, about yeah. the dogs and Now you know, how long like was that. Mel at Best Friends before you adopted him? Well, Mel was one of the first few that got adopted. There was a group of 3 uh that were adopted first and Mel and Cherry went home within a week of each other. So he, they had all been at the sanctuary for about two years. They so, didn't allow any adoptions so, for the first couple so, of years. So what would you, I mean, again, and it's another adjustment then. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm going to a great home. Yeah. Um, I forgot the lady's name that was crying. Oh, my gosh, when she let Cherry, that's to say goodbye to Cherry. It was like, oh. oh. yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, because, yeah, they've been, they were there at quite some time. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle Besman, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and, and another change. But like she said, um. It, it's not right to keep them here when they can be in a yeah. home because that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. How many dogs are left of, uh, at Best Friends that will just stay there? Well, at this point, there's only a handful. Um, the exact number, I'm not sure. It's probably four or something so like that. There might many. be five. No, there there were just a few, and you see them in the documentary where they, um, you know, they they may still. There are a few that have behavioral issues. Maybe they're a little dog aggressive. I yeah. mean that, and that was just just only a couple of them, surprisingly. Wow. Um, but and and now they're older. You know, Mel is one of the youngest ones. How uh, old is Mel now? Uh, well, gosh, let's see. I mean, uh, Mel's got to be about ten. He looks good. Yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and eventually, you know, he ends up with this amazing life. Yeah. Um. You just only wish it was earlier. I know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know. But he he does. He has a fantastic life now. He, he goes with me. You know, he's able to go to work with me, and oh, the, you know, yeah, no, that's one of the best. Do things. everything with me, and, and yeah. And I think we're trying to encourage as many businesses to allow people to bring their pets. Because you should. Why shouldn't you? You should. And you know what? If I were employing people, I think it would give me a good indication of the quality of employee <laughs> I was hiring. You know? Yeah. Do you have pets? No. Sorry, I'm not yeah. hiring you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you, do you mean you don't like dogs? <laughs> well, you know, it is, it, you get points with me, with me if you do love animals, but yeah. if they don't, I think that's weird. <laughs> yeah. That's really strange. Very telling of your character. Very it is odd. concerning. In one word, what does Mel mean to you? Ah, uh, hmm. That's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Um, you know, I would say um, resilience. Oh, yeah, it's a great word. You know? It's a perfect word for him. Yeah. It's perfect. There's a lot we can learn from from these dogs. Yeah. Do people still use the word victory dogs, or is that going away? No. They still use it? Yeah, I I think it's it's great, you know. uh, Because they did did come out the other end the right way, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's important to have, you know, everybody that got the— and there are some people, there are some families that chose— they didn't want to be public about this, yeah. and maybe they were concerned about their 
homeowners associations yeah, or yeah. whatever, you know. So they just, for whatever reason, have decided to, to, to do a great thing, which is give them the best home. That's what's most important, but yeah. they, they don't want to be public about it, and that's fine. Yeah. I just, I made the decision, and it, part of it was because of the, the position of uh, media that I was in, mm-hmm. that I was just going to speak about this as loud as I could yeah. because, and, and, and keep doing it, yeah. you know, because, um, you know, I, I, and I say this in the film, but, you know, I, I, I wasn't able to be there, uh, you know, to protect Mel when this happened, Mm -hmm. but I'm certainly able to do that now. And although I may not have something to actively protect him against now, uh, by, as a byproduct of this, I think through this message, I've got an ability to protect future dogs that this could possibly happen to. Because let me tell you, You there, sadly, the only thing unique about Michael Vick was the football talent. That was it. People like that walk among us Mm -hmm. they're everywhere we don't know who they are there will be more in the future yeah uh and and so there's there's if you think that this is uh something that that happened and now we've moved on and we won't face it again you're sadly mistaken yeah you really are and i think it's important to say you say keep keep that in the forefront and keep educating people yeah and not to be scared of this breed i mean they're fantastic dogs they were known as nannies you know absolutely listen no different just do yourself this favor if you're listening to this you're on the fence this sounds like a foreign concept you bought into the myth or whatever just to, the next time you're in a target you know whatever department store apply it to children all right so the next time you see a little out of control kid just watch long enough to see the parent come back and you're gonna go oh see what happened here I get you know that. I totally yeah. get that. or vice versa the next time you see the squared away kid you're going to see a really involved, responsible parent alongside. So it's That's no, right. it's and you know we did a reunion with the dogs uh, about five years uh, after the fact, and we got uh, we got six of the families together and uh, at best friends, and we all gave a little speech. And I pointed out, I mean, you you imagine this picture, you know, all the the six dogs are rolling around together on the grass and Aww. playing and all this kind of stuff. And I said, everybody, look at this. I said. Let's ask ourselves, what's the same and what's different from five years ago? Yeah. Same exact dogs. Yeah. Same dogs. Uh, but five years ago, under ver- brought together under very different circumstances. Yeah. Today, loving families, five years ago, criminal thugs. Yes. What's the difference? There's the beginning and end to yeah. your nature versus nurture argument. It's it's the perfect example. And, you know, people will say it, you know, well, it's all down to the owner. It really is. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. environment yeah. and, and, you know, whether they're exploited because of their, their loyalty or not, mm-hmm. or they have no choice for that. So I think I think this documentary is a perfect example of that, of, of how environment and people do make an impact. And like that five years must have been, there had to have been a lot of tears. Yeah. Oh, I would have been just bawling. Yeah. You know, just to see those amazing changes and just it, to see him happy. And- the reunion was a very emotional experience. You do see a clip of it in the Champions documentary, but you know, we all all the the dogs and the families stayed in a large uh cabin for a couple of days uh when we did that reunion. And I I wondered going into it, it's not that I, I thought it would go badly, right. but I just thought, well, these dogs haven't seen each other since, you know, the raid. It's been and a while. Will they want to interact with each other and all that kind of thing? And they were so wanting to interact oh. with each other. It was very interesting. It was, uh, I, I, I came away from it thinking, it looks sort of like a high school reunion, you know, where <laughs> the dogs are sort of trying to impress the other ones, you know, like, Look well, the best. <laughs> yeah, well, since uh, I've last seen you, uh, I'm now in no way fearful of walking through the door. <laughs> as I just demonstrated. Yeah, and, and I uh, now live in Las Vegas. Yeah, they're all trying to, kind of yeah, fancy. yeah, yeah. Here's the, here's what I got going for me. It is, it's a lovely thing. Do you know, it's been absolutely fantastic having Thanks you here today. Me. I'm so glad you're in town. Yes. Because you just add to all the other good people who are doing great things for animals. Oh, and thanks. So we, we do, we have these, um, these amazing organizations. We've got Compassion Works International, Carrie LeBlanc. If you don't know her, I'll introduce mm, her. She's yeah. fantastic. She, she is, uh, she's a circus protest girl. She's the animals oh, yeah, and entertainment. Good. She's making great and it's important here still. Oh, 
Uh, Sir, uh, and thankfully, not as bad as it used to yes, be, but still very it's important. Still go, it, yeah, For it sure. is. It's still going on. And I heard they're going to bring some pandas into that new Chinese casino for people mm. to gawk at. And yeah, so there's, there's a lot of stuff's gone away and there's some trying to come they back might in. Need, they might need to hear an opposing point of view. <laughs> they might need to hear one. To that idea. But we do have these great people in town doing yeah. really great things um, that you just add to that. And I'm just glad that you're Thank here. You. And I'm so glad, Mel. Okay. Anything I can, anything we can do to support the show, you just let us know. We're available anytime. We anything so, we can oh, do. yeah, we're going to call on you anyway. <laughs> just anything that's we can it. Do. You're in the family now. Thank you. <laughs> nice to be so here. So go to Netflix or go to thechampionsdocumentary.com. Watch it today. Don't shy away from it. You will love this beautiful documentary. See where the dogs are today and how their lives have changed. And how they change the lives of people, these amazing people who have really. Um, Ooh, they're good right to the core. Uh, And check it out. Share it with your friends. It's good to get this message out to everybody. So this is how I always close the show, everyone. I always say, remember, you can help an animal in need. Either rescue, adopt, donate, volunteer, or share their information, or share the documentary. Uh, Rescue your next family member. Replace the word shop with adopt. And be kind to all animals. It's been an absolute pleasure, Richard. No, my pleasure. Hang out all day with us. Oh, anytime. (laughs) I would would love that. And because Richard loves best friends... Go over over to Best Friends, make a donation. What's Mel's Facebook page? Yeah, so Mel is Victory Dog Mel. V-I-C-K as in Victory Dog Mel. And uh, he's on Twitter and Instagram, too. He's <laughs> he's very on top of his uh, social media. <laughs> he's, on his, he's on top of his game. Runs well, thank, in the family. Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching in today. Uh, you've been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio, where it's all about pets, people, and pop culture. And I'm your host, Sam, the queen of rock and roll dogs, and always kiss your pets. Good morning and good night, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Shut up and sit down. been listening to Vegas Rock Dog Radio. Heads, people, pop culture. He's cute than that. He's got eyelashes like you can not believe this dog. That I entered him into a couple of uh, contests. And we both had to oh, we can't get him. Oh, there is eyelashes. No. For real. That's what he looks like.